it is Halloween, I thought I would come with, to you with a Halloween story. Actually, that story is Halloween Party by Agatha Christie, which I recently read. Um, as I have said in posts before, um, I am reading through Agatha Christie, although not completely chronologically. I had to skip far ahead in the Perot novels to get to this one, but it was Halloween, so how could I not do that? I'm gonna give you a quick, my quick review and thoughts on this book, and then I have a bit of a rant that I'm gonna go on, so bear with me. So this book came out in 1969, so it's one of the later uh, Agatha Christie books. It is actually the second to last Perot novel that she wrote, the third to last Perot novel that was published. This takes place in an English town and there is a Halloween party, a Halloween fete. It's not Halloween as Americans understand it, but it is a party where children, I think 11 and up from the village come and play. And at the preparations for this party, there is a girl there named Joyce. And Joyce is one of those kids that I think we all know who's not terribly pleasant and tends to lie to get attention. So she's at this party with her parents setting up also at this party is Ariadne Oliver, who is a mystery writer and a friend of Perot's. To impress, everyone believes, to impress Ariadne Oliver, Joyce announces that she's seen a murder. No one believes her. They tell her she's lying and then they just kind of ignore her because this is the sort of thing that Joyce does. Well, by the end of the actual party, Joyce is dead. She has been murdered by someone drowning her in the bucket of bobbing apples. Ariadne Oliver goes to her friend Perot and says, please help me figure out what happened and how, who murdered this girl. And that's the setup of this story. It is a later Christie, as I said. Um, if you aren't familiar with Agatha Christie's uh, life, towards the end of her life, she did deal with some cognitive decline. And this is written in a period of time where you start to see that. Because of that, I didn't go in with super high expectations because I knew that this was in that period of time where she wasn't on top of her game. Um, I expected it to kind of not make sense, but that wasn't the case. Um, she kind of went in the other direction. The, it's a, this is a very carefully plotted mystery in a lot of ways. It, I knew very quickly, almost immediately, who the murderer was. And I kept hoping it wouldn't be that because that would be a letdown. This is the first time reading an Agatha Christie novel where I've immediately known who the murderer was. After reading this, I listened to the All About Agatha podcast on this book, and they pointed out, which I didn't notice, that Agatha Christie doesn't play fair in this book. She doesn't give you all the clues you need to figure it out. I didn't notice that because I had figured it out anyway. But going back and thinking about it, they were right, because the clues that you need to, if you were to, if you didn't know immediately who did it, to figure it out, you wouldn't have the information you would need to come to the solution. So. I can see this is not one of her best books. I still kind of enjoyed it. Uh, there's some interesting things in it. Uh, signs of the times that Agatha Christie is, is moving on with the world. Uh, you know exactly what she thinks of how the kids dress in 1969 and it's not a positive thought. There is some humor in it that I liked, but all in all, it's not my favorite Agatha Christie. It was still a worthwhile read for this time of year, even though it didn't feel especially Halloween-ish. Um, how it could have been any kind of party where this happened, but it's a Halloween party and that's just the way it was. So I read it, I can cross that one off my list. Now, my rant. Uh, this is not actually about the book itself, but I will say the morning of the day that I started this book. So I knew I was gonna start it after lunch, but this was in the morning. I saw that it had been announced that Kenneth Branagh's next Agatha Christie adaptation would be a movie called The Haunting in Venice, and it would be based on Halloween Party. And I was so excited because I was ahead of the game. I was already going to read this book. So I thought that was wonderful. I have seen both of Kenneth Branagh's adaptations. I will admit I've not yet read Murder on the Orient Express, so I can't compare that to the book, but I have read Death on the Nile and I did read it before I saw the movie. Both of those movies, from what I understand with Murder on the Air Express and what I witnessed with Death on the Nile, they're fairly faithful adaptations. He makes some changes, but the actual story is pretty unchanged. People have their thoughts about the Kenneth Branagh adaptations. I have my thoughts about the Kenneth Branagh adaptations, but I'm gonna continue watching them anyway. 
I enjoy them for what they are. But as I'm reading this, and I'm thinking, well, this is, it's, it's going to be called A Haunting in Venice, and it's going to be based on this book, but there's nothing in this book that would signify anything that could be considered a haunting in Venice. So after I finished the book, I actually went to IMDb to read, oops, I just lost it, to read what the actual description of the movie is. Uh, the movie, by the way, A Haunting in Venice, it's supposed to come out, I believe, in October of 2023, so in about a year. Uh, the cast includes people I don't know, but also Michelle Yeoh, uh, Jamie Dornan, and most intriguing of all, Tina Fey. <laughs> but there you go. The description of the movie is, in post-World War II Venice, Perot, now retired and living in his own exile, reluctantly attends a seance when one of the guests is murdered. It is up to the former detective to once again uncover the killer. That's not this story. That's not at all this story. So I don't, I don't understand how this can be adapted into that movie. I'm a little frustrated with it too, because as I said, I think his two previous adaptations were pretty faithful. I, um, there are 30 plus, excuse noise that you hear, that's my son being noisy. <laughs> there are 30 plus Perot novels and there's 50 plus Perot short stories. So you have between 80 and 90 sources of material to go to choose from. I don't understand why this point in time only the third movie into I don't know if this, gonna, this is going to be a franchise or what, you go to something that you are going to have to change probably to the point that it's going to be unrecognizable. My guess, and this is just my gut right now, my two predictions about this movie is that the, the form of murder in a Haunting in Venice will be someone drowning in a thing of apples and Tina Fey will play Ariadne Oliver because that just makes sense. Um, I could be wrong. I don't know. That's my gut instinct. I don't, but I think this, that movie is going to be pretty much original material, which I just don't understand. If I were to go see Kenneth Branagh as Hercule Poirot in a movie, I want it to be a movie of a novel or a story that Hercule Poirot, Hercule Poirot was already in. I don't want to see an original story with that character. I'm not saying there's not a place for that. Sophie Hanna has her series and that's great. I plan to read that series. I'm looking forward to it. But I just think in the way that that was going at adapting existing novels and I'm assuming in some point short stories, why all of a sudden they would do this? It's a rant. I have a year to stew on this um, and I probably will stew for most of the year, but then I'll probably go see it on opening day because that's the way I am. I'm confused. So, if you have thoughts on this and if I'm totally missing how this English village mystery can turn into this haunting in Venice, let me know. If you have thoughts about the Kenneth Branagh adaptations, let me know. If you have thoughts about Chris yourself, let me know. So thank you all very much. And if you watch this the day that it's released, happy Halloween. Enjoy the trick-or-treaters and don't eat too much candy. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.